Welcome in, everybody, to a special edition of the Brett Allen Show. And today we are talking with Hamza Haq about this fantastic show on NBC, uh, Transplant, which is now in its second season. I've been a fan of this show since day one. And so when the opportunity came, oh, I was great. like, absolutely. Thanks for hanging out today. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me, Brett. Well, let's talk about this because this show is very exciting. There's a lot happening here uh, and a lot has happened, obviously, you know, in the first season. And now uh, we're back for a second run. Um, how did this project come about for you? Because it's just so good and so exciting. Um, well, yeah, so the, so the, so the showrunner, Joseph K, um, you know, we, we'd worked on a previous, uh, show together and, um, in that show, we built this character from the ground up, um, not, not Bashir, but the character that I was playing at the time, he was a, a foreign exchange student doing his master's in Canada and everything. And it was just, he was just put in your life experience and everything like that. And let's just do that. And then after that show was canceled, um, uh, after a couple of seasons, it, um, Joe's working on this new show, uh, and he calls me up and he's just like, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm doing this Syrian refugee like medical show, and I've built an entire like think tank of Syrian refugees and all these people like uh, consultants so who we're getting that story from." But he also wanted the perspective of, you know, you know, my own perspective of what it's like being a brown Muslim man uh, living in Canada and how I would react to certain situations. So he get a well balanced um you know take of how this man's behavior so about five minutes into the conversation i was just like by the way if you haven't cast it i'd be very interested in it. and then <laughs> and then um and then yeah about i don't know probably that was in october of 2017 i would say and then and then yeah october 2018 or september 2018 i got the part you know a year later well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it where you're like, hey, if you haven't cast this project yet, I'm right here. Yeah. Um, I think, too, in your profession and what you do, you have to have initiative, right? Because sometimes these things can take a long time to get to the point where they're actually picked up and then filmed. Um, I'm very curious in the fact that with this project specifically, um, once you got cast and you knew all about this and it was happening, mm -hmm. what was your process to get into the character and sort of begin to develop this? Because you, know, you have shows that are like nine seasons long and the character grows and matures. But for you, what was your initial uh, process to kind of get into this mindset of, of this doctor and sort of thing? I think, um, uh, you know, education is is the biggest part of it. Um, I'm, I'm not a doctor, I'm not Syrian, I'm not a refugee. And all of these things were asked, like if I was tasked with the responsibility of bringing as much truth to that and doing justice to the character, my responsibility as an actor, as a storyteller is to make sure I know as much as I possibly can about that within the time given to accurately portray that to I don't know, live up to that responsibility, I suppose. So I, you know, I read a lot of books They had put together this like wonderful package of like documentaries and articles and um, uh, novels that, that like to read in order to like, like fully immerse myself into it. I also had a lot of conversations with these other consultants who were part of that think tank um, to just sort of have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation about what the journey to Canada was like. And some some of the things that you see on transplant, like him, you know, Bashir being captured and him being tortured and him, you know, losing his parents and him, uh, you know, uh, doing, uh, you know, practicing medicine against the will of like the regime and stuff like that. These were all real life things taken from various people. So to to get their first hand account of it, it was just that it was imperative that I at least get those things right. Um, or, or as right as I can. Um, it's not. It's never going to be 100%. I'm not going to say that I, I, I've done 100% justice to the trauma that so many people have gone through and uh, continue to go through, um, not just in Syria 12 years later, but as we're seeing, uh, you know, in, in, in the Ukraine now and all that stuff. This is, these are harrowing experiences that I've, I've, I'm only so lucky that I, 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 I've never experienced. Yeah, well, it's very believable. <laughs> I mean, there's well, no thanks. question about that. <laughs> 
And Thanks. I mean, as far as medical dramas, procedurals, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, okay, is this really what can happen in a show? But mm -hmm. I mean, for this, you find yourself on the edge of your seat every week waiting to, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of find out what's going to happen with your character mm -hmm. uh, and sort of how it proceeds. Again, we've had several episodes, a few episodes so far. What can we expect uh, without obviously spoiling anything? Like what is kind of the future look like uh for the character and sort of how this arc is going to continue in its second season well i mean what we've seen so far you know there's this woman that comes back uh you know from bash's past and you know it's he's kind of stuck in between the life that he once had that he can't get over um not can't get over but he's that he's just you know traumatized about versus the life that he's aiming to achieve and create not only for himself but for um you know his sister and you know his partner and all of this stuff and there's also you know his his mentor and surrogate father figure his he's got some ailing health plus there's still like the looming thing of these uh you know uh, like his standing as a as a canadian and all of these things so in this season we just see him navigate through all of that um dealing with you know the 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 PTSD of all of that dealing with the social and professional hurdles that come with you know the high stakes world of emergency medicine as well as uh, his uh, his status as a refugee so um, I think that's as spoiler free as I can do it <laughs> <laughs> I know right <clears throat> um, that's good mm -hmm. we haven't got any messages yet from your team so I think yeah, we're well, good that's great <laughs> <laughs> I love it well this is a lot of fun and again you've been a part of other projects as well. Mm -hmm. I saw an interview that you did, I think it was fairly recently, where you were talking about, which I found very, um, I really connected with this story about when you started out, you kind of had this idea in your head of what you wanted to do as an actor. I think something to do with a Marvel film after like a certain period of time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you wanted to play a Bond villain, which I think are all very great goals. I think you have to have goals in this mm -hmm. business or you may not make it. But one last question here. What inspired you to become a storyteller? Uh, Hamza, what was it that made you go, this is something that I have to do? I suppose, like, you know, I come from, I come from a culture that's been doing this for thousands of years. You know, we love, we love stories. We all have those, like, uncles and aunties that embellish every little detail because they love the story of it. They love, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It could be something as simple as finding a parking spot, but it was just, like, it was the most phenomenal thing that happened, and it was hilarious. And for me, it was just, I, I don't know. I just, I felt it. I felt at home there, you know, taking drama class in grade six after immigrating to Canada. It was just like, all right, like, I'm I'm enjoying this a lot. I and then, you know, throughout high school and I was always part of plays and, and I just never considered it to be uh, something that I could do as a career until I like I asked. I literally asked my parents if this is something that I could pursue as a career. And they said, not till you get a degree, but you have, <laughs> of course, but I mean, but which is fair, you know, for, for immigrant parents who, you know, may have not, not had the chance to go to university because of financial constraints or societal, you know, availability. It's important for their children to have some kind of, you know, call it fallback, call it stability, but to have options. Um, they never had options. So they wanted to make sure I did. So university was non-negotiable, but immediately after that, it was just like, yeah, man, do whatever you want to do. Like, but give it, I love uh, it. Give it 110%. And, I, and, but, and that was also part of the deal. I had to show that I was willing to put in that work before I asked if I could do it. You know, I, I like, I had to come to work prepared or I had to come prepared before I asked for a handout or asked for whatever, like work is the constant thing. So if I'm going to have to work my ass off for the rest of my life anyway, it might as well be at something that I enjoy, something that I love, something that makes me feel like I'm, I'm home. And as the last couple of years have showed you, like, um, you know, financial and professional uh, stability is a, is a fallacy, right? Like we don't, um, every accountant, every engineer and everybody in any stream of, uh, of professionalism has, uh, has been affected by, you know, COVID and it's, you know, for so many years, like all of my friends who went to business school or became engineers, 
you know, their actor friend was the only one who was working. And I'm just like, well, where's all that financial <laughs> stability now? You know what I mean? Like, but it's just, you know, it is stressful, but ultimately I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't think I'm built to do anything else. I'm sure I could, but mm, I'm grateful that my parents put me in a position where I have options and, um, you know, I'll, I'll choose the favorable one. I love it. Do your parents ever give you notes on your performances and things like that? Do they have a lot to say or they just are proud that you're doing what you're doing? Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, be sure to watch NBC Transplant. This is a fantastic show. Uh, Hamza, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Brett.